My Hero Academia is currently in its final act, and for those of you that are hearing this for the first time, don't panic. There is a difference between final act and final arc. Each act is made up of a few arcs, and so with that, there is still a lot of story to unfold. There is no official breakdown, but we personally look at it like this. The first act ended with All Might losing his power and All For One going to prison, following the Kamino incident. This was a major point in the story that tops all previous moments, and it set up the story for what was to come next. Examples of this being the High End Hood vs Endeavor fight, and my personal favorite arc in the story, My Villain Academia. The second act started with the after effect of the Kamino incident, and ended with the somewhat recently wrapped up War arc, during which we saw a conflict between Shigaraki and All For One begin to brew, and Deku develop a new desire to not defeat, but save Shigaraki. Like the Kamino incident, the second act, and more so the ending of it, is the foundation of this third and final act. At the end of the day, this is an action series of course, and with everything that's been built up to this point, we can make pretty solid predictions on the fights to come later. Before we get into that though, if you haven't already, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe to Plot Remote Notifications on to never miss an upload. We upload just about daily and would love to have you join in on our conversations. We're always interested in hearing what you guys, the Plot Army, has to say on these topics, so don't be shy, leave a comment below and let us know what you think. With that said, let's get into this top 5. We'll start off with the one most likely to happen the soonest. At number 5, we have All For One vs Shigaraki. At the start of the series, it became obvious that Shigaraki would become the next All For One, and not just in terms of power in the underworld, but it was clear he'd received this power. I'm pretty sure one of our first My Hero Academia videos was a theory about this. There were a lot of clues that stand out at the time being All For One saying that he intends to pass on everything. So we always knew All For One, the quirk, would be passed on to Shigaraki. What we didn't know though was that All For One had a means of cloning his quirk, nor did we know his consciousness would be passed on and able to take over Shigaraki's body. There were of course thoughts on this whole thing being a ploy to use Shigaraki, but the details were unclear and very speculative at the time. Now, during the war, we had the debut of All For One Shigaraki, which was just an absolute beast, but we also had the re-emergence of All For One inside the mind of Shigaraki, the man himself. And he didn't show up to be a helpful tutor on the power, this man came to grab the whole controller. And he did end up doing so thanks to the damage Shigaraki had sustained during the battle. With this opportunity, he went to free his original body from Tartarus while grabbing some new pawns to manipulate into helping him fulfill his plans. And so, what we have right now is two people with the all for one quirk, the master and the student. And the student Shigaraki believes this is his time and now his power. He's ready to cause destruction and go on living the way he pleases. The master has other plans, he wants to continue using Shigaraki as he always has from the very beginning. So these two are not on the same side and they never will be again, at least that's what we believe. They no longer desire the same thing and Shigaraki now has the power and confidence to walk on his own. They're both very violent people with strong wills, so this conflict will definitely breed violence. A fight that I personally believe will top the All For One vs All Might incident from the Kamino incident, and most if not all the other fights we've seen in the story as of this recording. Not only is All For One already one of the top quirks to see in action, but we're going to see this power verse itself. That should just be epic, I don't think there's any question about that. I don't think much needs to be said there. Along with that, there are high stakes here because these are not heroes. This is two people ready to kill for their goals. There is no defeat, there is only death. The emotions should be high in this fight as well because these two have been together for a very long time, and there is still the possibility that All For One is the one who sent Shigaraki down this path by implanting the Decay Quirk. That's just a theory out there, but if it ends up being true, essentially All For One would be revealed as the cause of Shigaraki's childhood trauma. Not all of it though because his father was abusive to begin with, but the darkest parts would be All For One's fault, and I don't take Shigaraki for the forgiving type. Another potential point in this fight is the death of Shimura Nana. Shigaraki has not shown any reaction to knowing his mentor was the cause of his grandmother's death. We haven't seen this information directly revealed to him, but it's heavily implied, so he must know, although it is possible he simply does not care about this. This fight will end in Shigaraki's victory. He is the future and the main enemy that the story has been growing since the very beginning. He's not going anywhere. What would be crazy is if we see him decay all for one by grabbing him in the face the same way he did his father as a child. That would be insane, the end of All For One and the birth of Shigaraki as the new king of the underworld. Up next we have number 4, Shoto vs Toya. The perfect child versus the one considered a failure. 
Following the war, and a reveal of Dobby's true identity, Endeavor would recall the dark events of the past with his family, most importantly with Shoto, who was too young during most of it. The end conclusion was that the two would work together to put a stop to Toya's villainous activities. While this conflict will involve Endeavor, we're listing this one as Shoto vs Toya because that's how the fight will most likely end up going, whether Endeavor gets sidetracked handling another enemy present or gets heavily wounded leaving Shoto to finish the job. In the end, the battle between these two kids is the main focus. In a previous video, we theorized that Dobby may actually have an ice quirk of some sort that he's yet to fully develop. Whether that ends up true or not remains to be seen, however, we do 100% believe there's more to Dobby than we've seen so far in the story. I doubt there will simply be a big fight that wraps it up. There needs to be some sort of shock that makes that fight more special. There just has to be something, and that something is most likely related to how he survived that fire incident that led to his disappearance and later becoming Dobby. In the comments, let us know if you agree with this. Is there another big reveal to come in relation to Toya? Or will there simply be an emotion-filled amazing fight to wrap up his story and this conflict? If you agree that there is more, let us know what you think that reveal will be. For us, seeing Dobby actually have ice and be the perfect child his father dreamed of would be the greatest finish. Knowing none of this had to happen, knowing it could have ended with him and Shoto could have very well never been born would just be insane. Imagine Dobby's insane smile and laughing as he shows this to Endeavor and Shoto. We can't be the only ones rooting for something like this. But anyway, regarding the conclusion, we see Dobby either being arrested or dying, and not dying to Shoto or Endeavor, but just causing too much damage to himself in an effort to win that ends up destroying his own body. Either way, Toya will lose. Up next at number 3, we have Deku vs Shigaraki. This is of course the most obvious upcoming fight on the list, and for most of you guys I'm sure the most highly anticipated one. It's pretty straightforward, we have the successor of the greatest hero, and the successor of the greatest evil in all of history, who will battle it out, and end essentially a beef that has spanned several generations. The two characters have somewhat similar origins, they were both lost at a young age, and one had evil be the only hand extended, and the other had all might be the one to extend a hand. Well, really, he held All Might's leg and ate his hair, but hey, you know the story. It could have very well gone a different way for Shigaraki, but it didn't, and now he is full of hatred and wants to destroy everything. Deku intends to save him despite warnings against this, and so with that I believe the end of this conflict will be again prison for Shigaraki or death by his own power most likely. More likely prison time because My Hero Academia rarely kills off a character completely and death at the end doesn't seem like the likely route, at least in my opinion. Deku will most likely find some way to win without killing Shigaraki. Not an easy task, I mean, even Quirkless he put up a real fight against the hero's best efforts. But we'll see how he does against Deku who will by then have 6 of his quirks unlocked. Deku is rushing towards this fight, he wants to end Shigaraki and offer one before they have a chance to steal one for all, but this effort won't end well. Rarely do things go right in fiction when rushing towards a fight, and especially in the way Deku is going about it right now. If he fights Shigaraki right now, more likely than not, he will lose. But of course, in the very end, Deku will win, and the long battle between the two greatest powers will be put to rest. This conclusion will lead to Deku becoming the greatest hero and society being saved. If you consume a lot of plot armor content, then you probably know we've made a good amount of videos talking about all of this. So to be brief, we also in the end do expect Deku to somehow save the world from the Quirk Singularity Doomsday Theory, and this fight will in some way tie into that. The Doomsday Theory is one of the few consistently relevant points in the story, so the ending will surely tackle that. At number 2, we have Kirishima vs Gigantomachia. Now, this is a bit of an outlandish matchup, but if you've been with the channel for a while, maybe you'll understand our thinking here. All the way back in January of 2020, before everything changed, we made our Greek mythology mega theory, a video which accurately predicted the vast majority of the war arc's many developments, and in it, we also stressed the similarities between Kirishima and Hercules. Hercules was a demigod known to be the strongest of the mortals. The efforts of Hercules were said to be integral to the victory of the gods during their war against the giants, what was known as the Gigantomachy. And at that, Hercules was most famous for his 12 labors, a series of incredible feats that were considered to be impossible prior to his accomplishment. The first of which being his defeat of the Namian Lion, a massive feline monstrosity that possessed a virtually impenetrable pelt. This creature was capable of withstanding any and all means of damage, however, in strangling with the creature, all the while withstanding its deadly claw attacks, he was able to emerge victorious and furthermore began to wear the lion's pelt, thus providing himself a level of defenses comparable to the beast itself, and while dealing with this lion, the goddess Athena helped him out a bit, 
and in this case, Athena is pretty much Mina, considering her shared past with the two as well. Hopefully, you're able to see the similarities with all of that, but to be fair, you could argue that this prediction has already come to fruition simply because it was Kirishima who threw in the final caster that put Makia to sleep. However, nobody has ever defeated Makia, and with the destruction of Tartarus, the government's ability to detain him despite his capture is questionable. If his master were to request his aid like a loyal animal, he'd surely come running. And so with that, he needs to be truly defeated. Clearly, Kirishima is nowhere near Maki's level of power, but it's overcoming those seemingly insurmountable odds that make for all of Kirishima's greatest moments. And again, the 12 trials of Hercules were all believed to be impossible as well. These two have history with one another at this point, and if anyone's going to actually defeat Makia, the most rewarding victor would be Kirishima. Now, lastly, and probably one of the more surprising fights on this list, we'll have Class 1A and the heroes versus the high-end Nomu. That may come as a shock, but yeah, they need to somehow play a role in this end conflict, and they will not be fighting Shigaraki, or at least, they shouldn't be. We've already seen a group effort against him and I think we're not going to see round 2 of that. That would be quite repetitive to see the same strategy executed again. And I can't imagine why they changed strategy because that one worked so well. I don't think most of us want to see Aizawa holding out again while the others beat up a quirkless Shigaraki. We got that already. We want to see Shigaraki's power, the quirk all for one at work. Why else would he have it? In the same way, all for one himself used it against All Might. I think we need to see Shigaraki truly use it against Deku. And truthfully, it's not the only reason, but I believe delaying that amazing sequence is partially why the previous fight was written that way. Yeah, Deku and the others wouldn't have been able to handle him using that power at the time, but there is beauty in teasing the power and not letting us see the true Deku for Shigaraki until later. I'm not sure how it could happen, but I'd even love to see Shigaraki gain some new quirks before that final fight also. We don't know how much he truly has, in all honesty. As cool as it is at its core, all for one, the quirk has been a little underwhelming, at least to me. With the ability to have many quirks, especially when you've been collecting for generations, I expected much cooler quirks to be used in that fight against All Might. So hopefully later on, some amazing quirks are shown to be inside of all for one currently. But yeah, Class 1A and the other pro heroes can together take out the remaining Nomu, while Deku focuses on the main fight. They need to play a role in the end, it's confirmed they will, and this is the perfect thing to be involved in. The Nomu are crazy strong, but in the most impressive case of one being taken down, Hood, hero teamwork is what got it done, and I imagine with the right strategy, Class 1A and the other pro heroes can overwhelm and take out the Nomu. And not only the Nomu, but possibly more of the villains all for one has on his side by now. It remains to be seen whether Shinso ends up joining Class 1A, but his unique quirk could surely come in handy at the end. Can Class 1A truly play a key role in the end? If so, will it be directly against Shigaraki, or like we mentioned, against the Nomu and possibly other top villains? That is the list of our top 5 upcoming fights, however, we do have one honorable mention. One you probably already noticed missing from this list, and that is Uraraka versus Himiko Toga. Toga, last we saw of her, was interested in speaking with Deku. She was displeased with Uraraka and then seemed intent on having a conversation with Deku next. Despite that inevitable reunion with Deku, we don't believe he'll be the one to take her down totally. The matchup just isn't even. Uraraka is a balanced opponent, and with their last interaction ending the way it did, I imagine they have more to talk about. It didn't feel like the final time we'd see them together. I'd go as far as to say, it hardly even felt like a fight. And so, we give the honorable mention to these two girls, bringing an end to their dispute that's been going on for a majority of the story at this point. With that said, those are our top 5 upcoming fights. We feel pretty confident about all of them happening, but share your thoughts on everything below. Which fight are you most looking forward to? As always, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the Plot Armor notifications on to never miss an upload. We upload just about daily and would love to have you join in on our conversations. If you'd like to support the channel even further, check out our Patreon link in the description below and follow us over on Instagram and Twitter for updates on all the latest and greatest anime and manga news, discussions, and even giveaways. Until next time, keep that Plot Armor on you. I'm KJ. Have a great day. Goodbye.